There is new Tower of God review from Mr. H. Brand. This one's called This Usually Sucks. But Tower of God Season 2, Episode 4, Make It Work. Guys, if you want to learn how to do YouTube, if you want to learn how to do good titles, look at what Brandon is doing. Every one of his titles are just packaged in a way that, like, even, like, audiences that doesn't watch Tower of God want to click on. But, hey, let's see what he has to say. So, Tower of God did something that usually sucks or like is honestly not that great at best. What sucked about the last episode? I don't know. Most of the complaints are coming from Webtoon readers that are saying the pacing is way too fast. While the anime only are saying this is the most peak episodes I've ever seen. Like, it, there's such a dichotomy between hardcore Webtoon readers of Tower of God and the anime only normies that are enjoying this shit. It's like duality of man. One person says, this is so peak, this is so high. And the next comment is like, I cannot believe how poor Tower of God adaptation is. Best in a lot of shows, which is the moment with our boy Wagman at the end. He is yeah. a feisty, feisty boy. And he's basically, he's ready to kill because of what happened to Nia. And honestly, that rage, that ferocity, to have it then toned down to saying, you know, I'm not gonna be like you. I'm gonna change okay. my ways. Like in most shows, I actually don't have a lot of issues with it, but I usually am not the type of person to be like, damn, that's such a great scene. I'm so proud of him for not killing. It's more of like, okay, yeah, I get it, but it is what it is. Oh. I get it, I get it. It was basically a lurker, right? The way that he went to high road and said, you know what, you're also a victim of the tower. The cycle of revenge and pain will never cease to exist. I'm uh, sorry, it will never end unless I like I take the high road and stop this, right? It is. But I often see in the anime community people rant and rave about how like it's the dumbest thing ever, like this type of person will never change. Why are you going the the high Yeah, and we made the joke, right? We made the joke of as soon as Wang Nan says this to Lurker, you know what Lurker's gonna do? The first thing he's gonna do was visit Nia's grandma's, you know, the, the sweet and sour pork shop and say the bills ain't paid yet, Baba. What you, what you gonna do? Yeah, uh, independently, uh, uh, sorry, an individual like that probably won't change, but the whole idea is to make a systematic change so that the future generations can create a culture and society where people will behave better. Will Lurker change due to this one instance? Probably not, but if you want to have actual systematic change, you gotta start somewhere. High road when trying to go the high road uh, is normally gonna bite you in the ass. I was actually expecting when he decided to tell this man that like, hey, I'm not going to be like you, I'm going to change. That as soon as he pulled away, he was going to try to kill him. And then obviously, bam, Viola would have to come in and kill him for him because... That would have been hype. That's a good way where Wang Nan goes the high road. And then we also still get kind of a revenge by killing Lurker by Viol doing it. That would have been, you know, everyone would be happy. Obviously, you were naive. And instead, they went and did something that actually lends Tower of God... Yeah. To be in a more interesting position going forward, because not only do you get the bombshell that Fug wanted him to pass, which is a whole can of worms in of itself, it's the fact that you actually saw something break in this man. Because throughout that conversation about how we're actually pretty similar, I used to be where you are sort of mm. a thing, you actually do believe that Wangnin of all characters could easily become the same, if not worse, because that's what the tower is. I mean, that's a pretty normal thing we understood in season one is that the tower corrupts and given. Yeah, I, the tower does corrupt. Everyone is like betraying and everyone copes and justifies their own shitty actions of betrayal by simply saying, well, this is just the rule of the game, you know? I'm just a player. If you want to be mad, be mad at the creator of the tower. So the whole idea is to have reform in the tower so that no one has to behave like this. Everyone can justify their shitty behaviors by saying it's for the sake of climbing the tower. But is that really the type of society you want to live in where everyone's out to get each other? Sounds like a pretty shitty place for me. Sounds like a lot of paranoia. And debts and everything like that, it's no wonder people do end up in pretty bad situations. Does it excuse situations? No. But the idea of basically announcing that, like, this is going to be the start, that, like, I hope if I ever get so corrupted, which he already doesn't really think that highly of himself, that people would give him that that way out as well. And the idea of wanting to scale the tower and bring about that change and being the change he wants to see... Like, becoming the devil and almost siding with the devil is such an interesting way that they handle that entire situation. And what did they say? If God is going to forbid, uh, if God has, um, if you've been like, uh, what's the word? Not forbidden. If you've been forsaken by God, then make the deal with the devil. I think they said something like that. And in most shows, I think a lot of people would come out saying that sucks. But I'll actually be shocked if most people don't actually kind of appreciate the way Wangnan handled that entire situation and actually did something that was actually 
Quickly, I gotta dispose of a monkey. Hey. Hey, retard. What do you think I'm doing right now, Azure Lumiere? What do you think I'm doing right now? I'm literally reacting to a video. I'm in the middle of recording. And then you decide to come in and ask a personal question. You decide to come in and ask a personal question, just disrupting the entire flow. What the fuck do you think is happening right now? You know what's happening right now? You're about to go on a two-week vacation, dumbass. So fucking stupid, dude. Have some social awareness. A streamer is trying to make fucking content in the middle of recording. You try to have a personal conversation like Jesus Christ. Then again, why do I have any expectation from basement dweller weebs? Of course they're not going to understand social cues. Quite compelling. Now, of course, I do have full live reactions over on Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thought to any of these Tower of God episodes, it's going to be over there exclusively. Go check so, it out. This season of Tower of God isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, if I'm being honest. But it's something... Four episodes in? I would personally rate this at an 8 out of 10 minimum of enjoyment as an anime only. Which people are going to think it's a hot take. But I bet you those people are going to be webtoon readers. I thought the anime was perfectly enjoyable so far. Every episode has been really, really fun. The thing that does have my interest, and honestly, the surprising thing for me is the thing that has my interest the most is a character that got introduced. Wagner. Now, walking into this season, the whole thing I've been excited for is like, oh man, Rachel pushed our boy off, let's see what he's up to. And while that's definitely very interesting still to me, it's it's kind of weird to be at a situation where it's like, okay, I actually want to see more of Wangnan, if anything. Because yeah. we're at a situation where it's like- Well, until now, I didn't really care. Wangnan was like, all right, he's just a simp. He just, he's not a simp, but he's like, throws his pride out the window to like lick Veal's feet and he'll do whatever it takes to just grovel if that means surviving. And I'm like, do I really care about a character like this? Like, not really, he has no backbone. But then the most recent episode just did a complete reversal of my opinion on him because he stood up for himself and he even challenged like principal core ideologies of the tower and has like a goal. And the more I think about it, he is the person that will put on the throne if Veal is going to slay the king, right? And the poster even shows those two of such importance. It's not, you know, Bomb and Blue Turtle anymore. It's Bomb and Wang Nan. So now I do enjoy Wang Nan a lot. I just don't really like the Pokeballs. Like the Pokeball explosion mechanic, I'm not a big fan. Anytime there's any of these battle shonen, I prefer the people that's fighting rely on their own personal skills rather than equipment and utility stuff, which just seems like a 1010 from Naruto. How many people like 1010? Are you really gonna say 1010 is your favorite character over people like Rock Lee, Sasuke? You know, it's like, I don't really wanna be a 1010 man. It's like at some point i feel like we're gonna get a flashback there's gonna be a flashback episode or something and we'll get a little more confirmation of what happened in the in between of season one and two but the unfortunate thing about this season for me and i'm gonna be honest okay, okay. I'm gonna be let's hear it honest. let's hear it this season's anywhere close to perfect and i wouldn't say it has the same level of excitement as season one does for me Ooh. perfect is a very unreasonable thing to expect from any anime I don't think I've ever seen a perfect anime, to be honest. Perfection is not supposed to be possible. It's a relative point to compare other series to. No anime, I think, is really truly perfect. And if there is, there's a very small handful, a handful of them. And I guarantee you, those animes has not even fucking aired the last decade. People are going to probably look at, like, Legend of the Galactic Heroes and point that out as being a perfect anime. So, like, that point of contention, I think, is pointless. Regarding the same level of excitement as Season 1... Hmm... Season 1 was pretty hype. Everyone has their own nostalgic moments that they refer to. Nostalgia can somehow override recency bias as well. And everyone's entertainment is subjective, so totally fair for him to say Season 1 was more exciting. But for me, if we compare the first four episodes, Season 1 for the first four episodes was really hype. It was really fucking hype. I don't know actually anymore me now that's gonna ruffle some feathers for some people but i'm gonna be honest the big thing that i have an issue with when it comes to the season after now watching a month of this show four episodes is that it almost feels like it acts like we've known characters longer than we have now if this was coming off the heels of season like nia and Miseng and koseng and Paryong, like is he is he talking about the new set of characters right now like season one obviously they had a lot of time to develop like Endor C, Anak, Shibisu, Serena, you know, even fucking Ho, Laure, right? The OG gang. And you get to know them, you're constantly with them, and you become friends later. But in the beginning of season two, I guess for the sake of pacing, they're rapidly advancing the relationship with the characters, and they're already just kind of 
playing cards, you know, casually, having slice of life moments, and maybe some people are not able to feel that connection because, again, it was rushed for the sake of pacing in terms of how much, you know, um, episodes are going to be able to adapt off the chapters they have in Tower of God. Season one, and we're still interacting with characters or, you know, relationships from season one, it'd yeah. be a little different. But I didn't actually care about that death if I'm being honest. Cared in the way that it clearly affected characters, and I was like, okay, that's that's good emotional storytelling there. But it almost was like, it felt to me like the show wanted to act like we've known this character mm -hmm. our whole life. And it'd be different if this happened at like episode eight or something, and we've actually built months of like character sure. building. And yeah, we've had a couple slice of life moments even in the pre- But like, here's the question I posed to you. Imagine that the most recent episode was the end of season two finale. This is episode 13 or 12. Because we spent the previous episodes doubling, tripling for the sake of proper pacing and adjusting. Would you want an entire season based around this arc? Right? Because like, what is the alternative? We're in this current arc, and yes, we could flesh out each character almost like a one-to-one -one adaptation of the webtoon. But if you do that, it may satisfy the small percentage of Webtoon readers that wanted a proper adaptation of Tower of God, a slow burn. But you know what that's going to do to the 99.999% of the anime-only audience that's watching this shit? They're going to say this is more mid than Season 1. People aren't going to buy merch, DVD sales. People are going to talk about it. And then, no more Tower of God. I feel like a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what the point of an anime is. An anime... It's supposed to be, and it's not my thought process. This is just a business strategy. This is marketing and advertisement so that you go to the source material. It's a totally, it's intended, this anime is intended for a totally separate audience. Let me give you a reference. You know Oshinoko recently? Oshinoko is talking about the theater play. And one of the biggest points of problems right now is how the manga tells a separate story, but a theater is a much different experience. It's a totally separate experience for a different audience. And this is the same thing with anime and the source material. You're giving a different experience for a different sort of audience to pull those people into the hardcore source material. And to have an expectation of fleshing out multiple episodes so that you can have a one-to-one, -one, I feel defeats the purpose of what an anime is supposed to be. And in, in fact, just fucks you over in getting more anime-only content. But I know for a fact that sweaty... You know, webtoon readers that are so gatekeepy of this show, it's going to be like, hm, we don't need the anime. Just don't ruin Tower of God. Just like, just shut the fuck up and read your books. This is not meant for you. This is meant for completely other people that's trying to get in on something that you love. Previous episode, but it's like, we actually didn't know a lot. Which, here's the thing to play devil's advocate, it doesn't always have to be, like, a lot of shows start off with big deaths, and clearly we don't have a connection to said deaths, but it affects the characters we're following, so we care. And in this case, I feel that way. I do care for Wagnon and the rage and sorrow he's going through, alongside all the characters. But there is something about how it just, like, the way these characters interact is almost like the show's trying to make me feel like I've known them for far longer, mm. and I don't have that connection. And that is the unfortunate byproduct of pacing stuff like this, right? I can totally get that. For me, the, the thing that is selling me on watching season two is the whole Viole plot and Wagnon's plot. And why Fug wants to let this boy rise up the tower, where he'll go as a character. He's. I think it makes a lot of sense why Fug wants to get him up. Because obviously we're trying to dethrone the king. And if we dethrone the king by using a slayer, who's going to replace the throne? It's not going to be Viol. Probably going to be Wangnan probably one of if not the most fascinating characters that i can recall in tower of god granted it's been a hot minute since i watched season one and obviously i'm excited with the cliffhanger that it's not really a cliffhanger but a little tease of what we could see next week blue um, turtle but at the end of the day this pokemon master is just so fascinating but if i'm being a hundred percent i don't really care about any of the other characters so far if they that's totally fair i actually don't care about most of the other characters either horian was a bit interesting and then he kind of popped off Recent episode with the new form, the devil in my right arm, and his side mission of trying to find this person. AK Raptor got a lot more love last last episode, and you get to see how he's an actual dad, and he does have a daughter that was taken away. Those two characters, I do care. The two other girls, the little girl and the older girl with the glasses, I don't give a fuck. Prince, I didn't really care until recently, and now it's interesting how this Nepo kid that I thought was going to be an antagonist is suddenly kind of... 
Ch he has no faction anymore, right? His people left him, so he has no choice to join us and do that. And the young girl, she is the most overrated. You guys are so fucking horny. Hot take. I think that the young girl is extremely overrated. And you guys just love her and say wood, wood, wood. Because you're thinking with your head. And it's not the head up here. Think about what she's done so far in the anime. And can you really say that she's great? She's a narcissistic bitch. Nothing wrong with that. And Dorsey is one too. But I don't care about Endorsey too much. <laughs> Hwadeon. Exactly. Hwadeon, best girl, bro. Like... A young girl? Nah, bro. I ain't about it. They get shot if they do. Like, there's some badass moments. A man unleashing a devil in his arm. I think that's pretty badass. That was sick. I'm like, okay, I want to see more of that. But if he was to die tomorrow, I'm not... Yeah. It, it, there is no personal connection like we have with, like, Blue Turtle or Rack. But it's only been four episodes. Like, we gotta let this shit cook. Like, could you possibly say the same thing? Right? I, if I ask Brandon, if we're in episode 4, I don't know exactly what episode 4 is in Tower of God. I think we're about to get at the Crown Games. If you ask, like, would you care if Blue Turtle or Rack died? Like, would you actually care? Maybe he'd have the same answer, right? We gotta let these characters cook. I'm not gonna shed a tear. And that's the thing. Some people are gonna say I'm being too harsh, but it's like, I'm just honestly being honest. Sure. That there, it does feel like something's missing with season two, and I don't think it's the shift in art style that some people are bringing up. It's or the that pacing. the animation's bad this season. I mean, the animation, especially when they go into those different moves, looks really, really good to me. I guess in a weird way, it feels like the cast is a little too bloated for me right now. And the more they focus on, I think this is why this scene bloated that's a good point the cast is too bloated and i think this will be a problem as we start to introduce more and more characters like how do you possibly like here's the thing right let's give data live as an example sure you might care about the girls in season one and to an extent some of them in season two but as the seasons go on there is so much screen time that you can adequately give to each you know girl this new characters coming in to the point that you don't really care about them and you know all the old people right Kotori, like Toka, you know, Kurumi, Morigami, they're gonna have the focal love because that's been the formula since the beginning. But you add more girls in and try to give them screen time, but it's not enough and you feel like there's no connection. Same shit happens in Tower of God. The more you start introducing these new characters, you need to be able to give them enough screen time appropriately so that the viewers will actually give a fuck about these characters. And that's kind of hard, right? It's like, it's like scope creep in like technical terms. That's character. There's just not enough time. Too many characters. Works so well for me is that it's really just focusing on Wangnan and his rage and his sorrow and really focusing in on that. It feels more personal. And while there's definitely some characters that have a lot of potential in this cast, it feels to me like, you know, they're focusing a little too. It's almost like stretching your resources a little too thin. Mm, the cast is a little too bloated right now. We need to trim out some of the fat. And uh, unfortunately, that's probably. What if they bring more fat and just more new characters? Probably also a reason why I'm okay with uh, characters maybe not making it like they did. Though they did bait me last week. I didn't see anyone think that that man didn't die because like, Rob Devil? like he was dead. He <laughs> that was the craziest and the dumbest and the funniest plot twist. It's like Rob Devil's dead. Prince goes in, opens his fucking box. <laughs> Rob Devil's like sight, kicks him in the side of the head. What? You weren't dead? I'm like, okay, the kick was funny though, at least. Comes back only to actually properly get killed and goddamn. But I will admit, I actually thought they were baiting us. I didn't think they were actually gonna kill Nia. And then like- Same. I didn't think they would kill Nia. And I don't really give a fuck about Nia. Because again, like who cares about these new characters? Of all the characters that's shown too, Nia has a lot of no screen time, no dialogue. Like, who really cares? It, the saddest thing was Wang Nan realizing, like, he was eating sweet and sour pork alone. That shit was kind of sad, right? Funny and sad in a weird way, but I was surprised that they killed Nia that quickly. Like, when the initial hit happened, I was like, okay, they're going to barge through the door. No, they actually committed to it, and it did hurt. It did hurt in the way that I was like, okay, no one deserves that, but it was just, there's something about this season where it's almost like, sometimes I feel like we're missing episodes is maybe hmm. the best way to put it, like, I should have bonded more of these characters up to this point, but I do feel like now that it kind of feels like the setup's over, like that's kind of like the best way to put it. It feels like we've got a way through all of the setup and we're at a good point now, especially with these two working together and kind of like, you know, it's almost like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. A deal's a deal, so we're gonna work together and yeah. working with the devil. And honestly, that's the best praise I can give the shows currently is that Wagnon as a character to introduce someone who almost feels like they're trying to steal the protagonist role away from who we are looking at as the protagonist and just somehow quickly come out saying I'm actually okay if we want to have more of a dual wielding protagonist role is something that's really, really impressive with the writing. It's just there's a it's, little too many characters. 
it's pretty ballsy that SIU would just introduce this new character in season two after. Because, like, everyone's expecting Blue Turtle Rack Bum, right? That's the original crew, but it's like, we haven't even touched on them. Blue Turtle shows up at the end, but, like, now there's, like, this other character, Wang Nan, who may be even more important than Blue Turtle, right? That is such a ballsy setup thing to do, and I hope it pays off. Characters going on screen right now, and a lot of them I don't really care about, but I'm open to see how they can evolve over time. Chicken Lover decided to give everyone a nice little lunch and... With sauce, too. That was a peak line. He's like, all right, you can order KFC for everybody. <laughs> with extra sauce? Yes, with extra sauce. You can use the company card. Then Love said, you motherfucker should be grateful that I bought you chicken. It's like, come on now, I thought it came out of your salary. I bet it came out of his card, bro. I still don't know why he wears that shirt, but he apparently is quite the chicken enthusiast. And yes, I like he loves how chicken. they even acknowledge that in this episode of saying about talking about chicken. It's like, okay, at least they're self-aware with the weird shirt he wears, but good episode. I love the weird shirt. I love how SIU tries to give a fuck about different characters. Also, shit, sorry, man. El Drago, thank you for the sub, man, six minutes ago. But um, I actually do love the... Uh... Oh, what's going on, bro? We're finishing off a video right now. Thanks for the raid, boys. Hope you had a good stream. But I actually do love how they gave a fuck about these different characters and wants to give them different quirks, even if it's something as menial as in him loving fried chicken. It just, just adds that extra... What's the word? It's like extra polish rather than uh, like a manga cover or someone just like having these side characters that don't matter and just like CGI just copy paste the characters. It's nice. Probably not, not even probably easily the best out of the four if we're being honest. I think it has a lot more right than wrong. I just hope that the next batch of episodes, the next four or so, yeah. are going to feel a little more structured because right now it kind of feels like it wants us to think we've known these characters. Nah, if anything, we're probably going to maintain this current pacing and who knows. I think the issue with the him feeling like there's missed episodes is because of the pacing and how fast they're trying to adapt the Web 2 material in order to give us a concise and hype anime that the anime only can enjoy while, you know, pissing off the Web 2 readers. But I think that this problem is not going to wait because it's the current strategy right now. But as we, if we don't have enough more characters, if we don't have new characters being introduced, then I think that it's going to be fine. We just got to let them cook and for us to actually give a fuck about them. Characters longer than we have, but that's just me. Of course, let me know what you're feeling down below. Guys, please go give Mr. H. Brandon a like sub to his channel. Like the video if you haven't. That's a pretty good breakdown of what's going on in Tower of God. And me as an anime only watcher, I think that there's no issue with Tower of God. Sure, I might feel like some of these characters are a little bit forgettable. But if you ask me in episode four in season one, if I actually gave a fuck about all the side characters that they introduced, I'd probably say the same shit. I think that we need to give him a little bit more time to cook. And by the end of season two, I bet he will give a fuck about some of the other characters. And for the webtoon reader that's mad, I'm sorry. The anime is not for you. It's for the masses like me who are just getting into this show and may even want to pick up the webtoon afterwards. And if you're mad about that, listen, you got to get a fucking job.